Have you ever heard of Donnie and Marie, a famous TV variety show of the 70s? If you were ever a fan of it, surely Marie Osmond is no longer a strange name. Marie, as a famous country music artist, has conquered the hearts of many audiences around the world, especially with the ballad Paper Roses. Despite her admirable successes in her career, Marie's life was tainted by false rumors that were never clarified. Today, as Marie Osmond turned 64, her daughter revealed the whole truth about those rumors. Don't miss this video! Mary Osmond's life story is deeply rooted in her family's musical legacy. Born to devout Mormon parents, Olive and George Osmond in Utah, she was one of nine children. Her older brothers, Alan, Wayne, Merrill, and Jay, set the stage for the family's musical journey by forming a barbershop quartet shortly after Marie's birth. This early exposure to music became a defining element in the Osmond family's history. Remarkably, at the tender age of three, Marie made her television debut, showcasing her talent alongside her brothers on The Andy Williams Show. Despite the undeniable success and the start of what would become long and prosperous musical careers for the Osmonds, Marie's childhood was not without challenges. In a 2001 interview with CNN's Larry King, she reflected on the difficulties she faced, acknowledging that her childhood involved a unique set of pressures. Marie Osmond, known for her bubbly and cheerful persona, admitted that maintaining this image came with a significant amount of pressure. Her ever-present smile and positive demeanor, though iconic, concealed the challenges she grappled with growing up in the spotlight. Despite the demanding nature of her early years, Marie expressed no regrets about her childhood, emphasizing that every experience, both positive and challenging, contributed to her personal growth. In the interview with Larry King, Marie shared insights into the sacrifices she made as a child, stating that requests to go out and play were often met with the reality of work commitments. She highlighted the dual nature of her experiences, acknowledging the difficulties while maintaining a positive outlook. According to Marie, growth in life doesn't solely emerge from positive experiences, but also from facing and overcoming challenges. Marie Osmond, beyond her public persona and musical success, bore a tragic burden that she bravely brought to light. In multiple interviews, she courageously disclosed that she had been a victim of sexual abuse during her formative years. In a poignant revelation to Utah's Deseret News in 2001, she spoke of being victimized by individuals who had temporary access to her life, people she did not know well. The details of the harrowing experiences were not explicitly shared by Osmond in her interview with Larry King in the same year, but she unequivocally stated, I was definitely abused, and it was definitely sexual. The profound impact of the abuse lingered throughout her life, manifesting in ways that were not immediately visible to others. She alluded to enduring consequences that went beyond what was externally evident. One of the heartbreaking aspects of Marie's revelation was her explanation for not reporting the abuse. She candidly expressed that she belonged to a generation where discussions about such traumatic experiences were rare. The cultural norms and prevailing attitudes of that time contributed to a silence that shielded such painful truths. In a poignant reflection, she disclosed to Larry King, I'm of a generation where those types of things weren't discussed very much. Her silence, she explained, was also a form of protection for her family. Fearing the potential harm the revelation could cause, she chose to bear the burden alone, stating, they couldn't do anything about it. It wouldn't have changed anything. And so you live with it, and you move on from it. Marie Osmond's journey of healing took a poignant turn when, in 2018, she shared with Dr. Oz that the individuals responsible for her abuse were no longer alive. While this revelation may have brought a sense of closure, it also underscores the complex emotional terrain survivors of abuse navigate the enduring impact on their lives, and the unique challenges faced by those who choose to share their painful stories. In 1976, the bright lights of fame cast a shadow on the innocence of 15-year-old Marie Osmond, 
as she stepped into the role of co-host for the variety show Donnie and Marie. What should have been a dream come true, however, unfolded into a tragically tumultuous experience, marked by the relentless pressure to conform to an unforgiving standard of appearance. Marie's aspirations collided with a harsh reality when producers, blind to the vulnerability of youth, subjected her to a soul-crushing ordeal. In a chilling revelation to Closer Weekly in 2016, she recounted a heart-wrenching encounter in a parking lot where, at a mere 103 pounds, she was berated with cruel remarks. The producers, wielding power over her with callous intent, labeled her obese, disgusting, and a disgrace to her family. The weight of their words was insurmountable, and she internalized their message. The success of the show hinged on her ability to conform to their narrow standards. Faced with the ominous prospect of jeopardizing the livelihoods of 250 people associated with the production, Marie found herself ensnared in a nightmarish paradox. The fear of failure and the burden of responsibility became an unbearable weight on her young shoulders. In a desperate attempt to salvage the show and shield those around her from the perceived fallout, she embarked on a perilous journey of self-destruction. Starvation became her desperate means of compliance, as she whittled her weight down to a precarious 97 pounds. The toll on Marie's mental and emotional well-being was immeasurable. In a candid conversation with Dr. Oz in 2018, she peeled back the layers of her struggles, revealing a pervasive sense of control being wrested away in various aspects of her life. Her battles with anorexia and bulimia, as she painfully articulated, were not merely about the physical manifestation, but were an outcry of desperation in the face of overwhelming circumstances. A lot of it is trying to control something when you feel out of control, she confessed, laying bare the tragic consequences of an industry that often prioritizes an idealized image over the well-being of its young stars. Remember, in 2007, Marie Osmond took on a new challenge by joining the cast of Dancing with the Stars. However, her stint on the show took an unexpected turn, not for her dancing prowess, but for a harrowing incident that occurred a few weeks into the season. As people reported, immediately after a dance performance, Osmond collapsed on the stage, appearing visibly winded. Her dance partner, Jonathan Roberts, acted quickly to break her fall. Following the collapse, a visibly embarrassed Osmond recovered and candidly addressed the incident, stating, This happens sometimes when I get winded. I'm so sorry. The incident served as a wake-up call for Osmond, leading to a profound realization about her health. During rehearsals for Dancing with the Stars, Osmond noticed that she was consistently out of breath. This coupled with a weight gain of 40 pounds over the previous five years, prompted a pivotal moment when her eldest son expressed a heartfelt sentiment. He told her, Mom, it would really be nice if you were there for my kids. This emotional plea became the catalyst for Osmond to make a significant lifestyle change. Osmond decided to partner with Nutrisystem, becoming their spokesperson while committing to their weight loss program. By the time the Dancing with the Stars finale arrived, people reported that she had shed 27 pounds, marking a visible transformation. Her journey toward improved health didn't stop there, as she continued to lose an additional 13 pounds, showcasing her determination and commitment to a healthier lifestyle. In addition, Marie Osmond's journey through motherhood, though marked by the joy of having a large family of eight children, took a tragic turn with the shadow of postpartum depression, PPD, looming over her. In a poignant interview with Larry King, Marie revealed that despite five of her children being adopted, she experienced a form of PPD with each of her eight children, a struggle that she vividly documented in her 2001 book, Behind the Smile, My Journey Out of Postpartum Depression. The depths of Marie's despair became acutely apparent in 1999, following the birth of her son, Matthew. The weight of postpartum depression became so overwhelming that she felt disconnected from her own life. 
In her candid conversation with Larry King, Marie bared the devastating impact of PPD, describing it as a condition that robbed her of joy, leaving her in a state of emotional desolation. It is the most devastating thing that I have ever been through, she expressed, unraveling the profound emotional toll that PPD exacted on her well-being. The situation escalated to a point where Marie, grappling with the intensity of her struggles, took a drastic step. In an interview with the Desiree News, she recounted a heartbreaking moment when she handed her baby to a nanny and declared, I can't stay. There is something wrong, really wrong with me, and I have to leave until I figure it out. In a desperate attempt to escape the suffocating grip of PPD, she drove up the California coast and sought refuge in a hotel, temporarily distancing herself from her family. The severity of the situation underscored the profound impact of postpartum depression on Marie's life. Her family's efforts eventually persuaded her to return home, but the experience left an indelible mark on her. In hindsight, she expressed regret about waiting until her son was five months old to seek help, recognizing that she should have followed her intuition earlier. Describing the incident to Larry King, she reflected on the crucial realization that her struggles extended beyond the realm of typical baby blues. In the heyday of her Donny Amp Marie fame during the late 1970s, teenage Marie Osmond navigated the world of dating as one of TV's top teen stars. In an interview with People, she reflected on the perks that came with her celebrity status, including the opportunity to date some of the hottest male teen idols of the era. Osmond, known for keeping her personal life private, revealed that she dated a variety of people during that time. Among the notable celebrities she had romantic connections with was Michael McDonald, the singer from the Doobie Brothers, whom she described as probably the first person I had a crush on. Additionally, she shared that she went out with the late pop star Andy Gibb, expressing her fondness for him by saying, Love him. Another prominent figure in her dating history was David Cassidy, known for his role on TV's The Partridge Family. Despite the apparent compatibility of two successful singers with a hit TV series, Osmond decided against pursuing a relationship with Cassidy. She humorously recounted the moment when, while recording in the same studio facility, she had the chance to check him out. However, she playfully dismissed the idea, saying, I looked at him and said, it's not going to happen. His butt's smaller than mine. Not going to do it. Marie Osmond's journey through marriage was marked by twists and turns, shaped by love, challenges, and ultimately a surprising reunion with her first husband. At the age of 23, she embarked on her first marriage to basketball player Stephen Craig in 1982. The union brought forth the joy of parenthood with the birth of their son, Stephen, in 1983. However, just two years later, the couple faced the difficult reality of divorce. Reflecting on that challenging period, Marie shared with Closer Weekly, I had a child, I was a single mother, and I didn't know if I could feed my son or pay my rent. The struggles of single motherhood underscored the hardship she encountered during this chapter of her life. In a surprising turn, a year after her first divorce, Marie entered into her second mariagi with music producer Brian Blosil. This union spanned over two decades and resulted in the birth of two biological children, as well as the adoption of five more. Despite the outward appearance of a large and blended family, Marie later disclosed the underlying pain and difficulty in her marriage to Brian Blosil. Speaking to Oprah, she acknowledged the challenges, saying, I had a very bad marriage, a lot of pain, a lot of sorrow, a lot of trying, a lot of effort. Following the dissolution of her second marriage in 2007, Marie's life took an unexpected turn. In a surprising twist, she found her way back to her first husband, Stephen Craig. The couple remarried at the Las Vegas Mormon Temple in 2011, marking a poignant chapter of reconciliation and renewed commitment. In expressing her sentiments to Closer, Marie conveyed a profound sense of conviction, stating, 
I know I'll never find anyone I love or respect more than Steve. Marie Osmond and Brian Blosel, having weathered the challenges of separation, found themselves confronting a new and profound struggle that would test the resilience of any marriage. Amid the demands of their busy careers and the responsibilities of raising eight children, the couple faced the formidable adversary of a serious illness. Brian was diagnosed with a benign brain tumor, a health crisis that plunged him into a state of severe illness, necessitating multiple surgeries. In a revealing interview with the Deseret News in 2006, Marie shared that they had recently received positive news about Brian's health. However, she candidly acknowledged the immense difficulty they had endured throughout his illness. He's been very sick, she disclosed, offering a glimpse into the gravity of the situation. Complicating matters further, Brian harbored a desire to keep the details of his health struggles private. Despite the challenges, Marie emphasized his wish for confidentiality, stating, he doesn't want me to talk about it. The burden of navigating a serious illness in the family, coupled with the decision to maintain privacy, added another layer of complexity to their already demanding lives. Marie, reflecting on their shared struggles, remarked to the newspaper, That's life. That's what everybody goes through. We've been through a lot of stuff. You can feel sorry for yourself or you can say, thank you. It was a wonderful learning experience that gave me compassion for people. Her words underscored a resilient perspective, acknowledging the inevitability of life's trials and choosing to find meaning and compassion in the face of adversity. In 2005, Marie Osmond and her family were thrust into a harrowing and financially draining ordeal when their home in Orem, Utah, became engulfed in flames. The Deseret News reported that the frightening incident unfolded in the early evening hours, creating a perilous situation for Marie's then-husband, Brian Blosel, and several of their children who were at home. The fire originated in the garage, and chaos ensued as Blosel, napping upstairs at the time, was startled awake by the panicked screams of his children alerting him to the danger. Reacting swiftly, he raced through the house, ensuring the safety of all his kids. The family's neighbors played a crucial role in assisting them to evacuate before the firefighters arrived on the scene. A spokesperson for the fire department disclosed a critical detail that may have mitigated the extent of the damage. The simple act of closing the door between the home and the garage proved to be a pivotal measure. Just closing the doors probably saved the home. The spokesperson remarked, emphasizing the significance of this action in preventing the fire from spreading further. Despite the timely response from both the family and the fire department, the destructive force of the blaze still exacted a toll. Firefighters estimated that around $50,000 worth of damage had been done to the property. At the time of the incident, Marie Osmond was working in Southern California, but her then-husband reassured the Deseret News, saying, She's very grateful all is well, indicating a sense of relief amid the trauma. In 2006, Marie Osmond found herself thrust into the unforgiving glare of tabloid headlines when she was hospitalized for what was officially described as an adverse reaction to medication. While the National Enquirer reported that it was a suicide attempt, her representatives vehemently denied such claims. Amy Hawks, a spokesperson, clarified to the Today Show, stating, she basically had an adverse reaction to some medication she was taking and she blacked out. Carl Engeman, her manager, dismissed the suicide reports with a wearied acknowledgement of the constant tabloid scrutiny, stating, we deal with those tabloids all the time. You get tired of responding, it's like punching jello. Despite the denial of a suicide attempt, the specifics of the medication in question were not disclosed by her representatives. A week after the incident, however, Marie Osmond appeared to have physically recovered. Hawks told Today, She's doing fine. She's vacationing with her family right now, offering a glimpse of normalcy after a tumultuous episode. In a tragic twist, Marie Osmond, during an interview with Oprah in 2010, revealed a deeper layer of her struggles. 
Despite the official explanation for the hospitalization, she admitted to grappling with suicidal thoughts during her battle with postpartum depression, PPD. She shared the chilling recollection of driving her car and contemplating how people might be better off without her. However, in a testament to her resilience, she managed to talk herself out of those dark thoughts, attributing her survival to a moment of clarity brought on by her age. She explained, It was my age that told me, Marie, that's crazy. In what is arguably the most heart-wrenching tragedy a mother can endure, Marie Osmond faced the devastating loss of her son, Michael Blosel, to suicide in 2010. At the tender age of 18, Michael, who had been residing in Los Angeles, tragically jumped off the balcony of his high-rise apartment. Marie opened up about the profound grief of losing her son during a poignant interview with Oprah in 2010. She revealed that this wasn't the first time Michael had grappled with suicidal thoughts, sharing that he had attempted suicide once before, but had made a promise never to try it again. The heartbreaking revelation added layers to the tragedy, underscoring the complexities of mental health struggles. In a somber and candid conversation, Marie disclosed that Michael had expressed feelings of loneliness on the day preceding his untimely death. It was the first time I heard him start to cry and say he was alone, that he had no friends, that he felt despair, she shared with Oprah, offering a glimpse into the emotional turmoil her son had been experiencing. Compounding the tragedy, Marie, on the night of Michael's death, was performing in Las Vegas and was unable to answer the phone when he tried to reach out to her. Learning about his death later, she grappled with the inevitable what-ifs, a haunting aspect of grief. However, Marie articulated a poignant perspective to Oprah, stating, There's always what-ifs. I think if you live in what-ifs, you stop living. This resilience in the face of self-blame and regret is a testament to the complex emotions that accompany the loss of a loved one to suicide. Marie acknowledged the ongoing struggle of dealing with Michael's loss, expressing to Oprah, it doesn't get easier. The pain of losing a child is immeasurable, but she found solace in the little respites that she believed God provided. The Osmond family also faced yet another devastating tragedy in 2014. As they mourned the loss of seven-year-old London Mortensen, the granddaughter of Marie Osmond's brother Jay, the heartbreaking incident unfolded in the aftermath of a freak accident, casting a shadow of grief over the close-knit family. Reports indicated that Mortensen's family was in the midst of relocating from Arizona to Utah, aiming to be closer to the extended Osmond clan when the unthinkable occurred. According to Radar Online, the young girl lost her life after being struck by the falling door of a moving trailer, a tragic turn of events that left the family shattered. The accident not only marked a profound loss for the Mortensen family, but also triggered a flood of painful memories for Marie Osmond. A family source revealed to Radar that the news deeply affected Marie, bringing back haunting echoes of her son, Michael Blosel's tragic death. The insider shared, When Marie heard about it, she was devastated, underscoring the empathetic connection she felt with the grieving family. The toll of this heartbreaking incident on Marie was further emphasized by another source who stated, Marie is just sick over it. She knows all too well how a mother feels when losing a child unexpectedly. The profound empathy and shared sorrow within the Osmond family highlighted the depth of emotional bonds and the collective grief they endured. In a testament to the supportive community surrounding the Mortensen family, supporters rallied together raising over $11,000 through a GoFundMe page. The funds were intended to alleviate financial burdens, facilitating the family's relocation to Utah during this difficult time. Marie Osmond, with a successful and lucrative career in show business, has amassed an estimated fortune of $20 million, according to Celebrity Net Worth. However, in a surprising and resolute decision, 
she revealed during a 2019 episode of The Talk, as reported by USA Today, that her children would not inherit a single dime. In a candid statement, Marie Osmond announced, I'm not leaving any money to my children. Congratulations, kids. She went on to explain the rationale behind this unconventional choice, expressing the belief that leaving a substantial inheritance would be a great disservice to her children. According to her perspective, handing them a fortune would undermine the invaluable gift of the ability to work and earn their own way in life. Marie Osmond articulated her concerns by pointing out the observed tendencies of children in wealthy families who inherit everything without having to work for it. She highlighted the potential pitfalls of such a situation, noting that it often leads to them getting in trouble. As a conscientious parent, she was determined to avoid this dynamic with her own children. In a bold and altruistic declaration, Marie disclosed her ultimate plan for her substantial wealth. I'm going to give mine to charity, she declared, emphasizing a commitment to philanthropy and contributing to causes that align with her values. This decision not only reflects her desire to instill a strong work ethic in her children, but also underscores a deep sense of responsibility toward making a positive impact on the wider world. Marie Osmond's return to television in May 2019 as a co-host on the daytime series The Talk marked an exciting new chapter in her career. CBS announced her addition to the show, and with enthusiasm, Osmond expressed her thrill at making it her day job and looked forward to sharing this new adventure with viewers and the CBS family. She stepped into the role as a replacement for departing co-host Sarah Gilbert. However, Osmond's tenure on the talk turned out to be surprisingly brief. In September 2020, after just a single season, she announced her departure from the show, citing her desire to spend more time with her family. In an Instagram post, she conveyed her gratitude for the experience, and her decision was met with understanding from both CBS and the public. Network spokesperson Lisa Spala, in a statement to USA Today, expressed appreciation for Osmond's professionalism and contributions to the show, highlighting her humor, kindness, and good nature. Despite the amicable public statements, Page Six reported a different perspective on Osmond's exit. According to an unnamed source, co-hosts Sharon Osborne and Cheryl Underwood allegedly presented the network with an ultimatum to facilitate Osmond's departure. This claim suggested a behind-the-scenes dynamic that may have influenced the decision for Osman to leave the show. However, a different CBS insider disputed this account, asserting that no ultimatum had been given. What do you think about Mary Osman's falsa rumors and the challenges she has had to go through over the past 64 years? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this, and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.